Hello students, welcome to Study IQ. In this session, we will continue with our discussion on theories of social stratification. So if you remember, uh, we started off with the theories, okay, and we have discussed about the initial attempt to understand, you know, uh, social stratification and inequalities. And we have basically talked about that evolution, right? We have discussed uh, from Plato, Aristotle till postmodernist time, what all the different approaches and what all were the different understandings. And in that, we have also briefly talked about what is structural functional approach, what is Marxist or conflict theories of stratification and what are Weberian theories of stratification. So these are the three topics which is there in your syllabus and these three is what you are supposed to study. So here in this session, what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk about the structural functional theories of stratification, where we will talk about Talcott Parson and Davies and Moore and also uh, W.L. Warner. And I've told you the conflict theories of stratification that I will do in the chapter of thinkers along with the discussion of Marx. And similarly, Weberian theory of stratification also I will cover along with the thinkers. So that integrated approach will be there and it will be very easy for you to prepare. Even in my regular class also when I am taking, I will be preparing in this way only and uh, not only this particular topic. For example, if you take paper one uh, chapters like politics and society, you can see that in paper two also. So we will do that together. Similarly, uh, when you talk about, uh, you know, kinship, family and kinship, paper one, paper two is there. So we will do it together so that, that you know, the effort can be reduced. And this integrated approach is what is actually required. And that is the reason why you need to have a very good coaching or you need to have at least a good, good mentor so that you can, uh, you can do the preparation very easily. Okay. So integrated approach, again, I'm telling you social change. If you see the 10th chapter in paper one, you can connect it with uh, paper two also. So all these are interconnected okay so make it in that way and make your preparation easier rather than you know you uh, don't make it as a big challenge okay don't like uh, you don't want to be overburdened with the entire syllabus almost you know 60 to uh, 40 to 60 percentage is overlapping paper one paper two so you study in that way and when you take the test also you can take it in that way not a problem okay so and when you're doing the writing practice also you can consider in that way okay so we will move to the theories of social stratification and before that what we have done is uh, we have understood that evolution i'll quickly tell that in one or two minutes and then we will move to the theories of stratification we basically started off with uh, aristotle and plato their understanding their understanding of social inequality was uh, something which is based on natural permanent and inevitable that is people are born unequal and that's what we have discussed in the previous session and then this is a naturalist understanding of inequality okay then later uh, a social understanding started okay that was with the uh, writings of saint thomas saint thomas saint uh, augustine so they have tried to understand uh, the social inequalities in terms of uh, property prestige etc so uh, social understanding of inequality actually started apart from the naturalist understanding of inequality a new school of thought emerged with these two people so that is uh, they try to understand inequality as something which is socially created and i've already told you how inequality is always social when the differences is there differences could be natural or social and when you attach certain values to this differences that will result into you know a social evaluation and that will result into inequality so we have talked about the difference between sex and gender we have talked about the difference between differences and inequalities and i've told you differences may be natural or social but inequality is always social okay there is some attachment of values there with the differences some kind of social evaluation is there that will result into inequality so when we talk about sex it's a natural difference when we talk about gender some socially uh, eva evaluation will be there okay Okay, so some kind of inequality is there when we discuss about gender so as a sociologist when you are writing these two terms you need to be very careful especially in your sociology answer in the context where sex is required you have to write that and where gender is required you have to write that you cannot do it you cannot use it interchangeably but when you when you write your essay general essay or general studies paper then there is no problem it is almost used interchangeably even the person who's evaluating also don't know what is actually the difference like you also don't know most of you also don't know and similarly the person the general studies student nobody is thinking about that difference they use it interchangeably and it is accepted also but when you're writing it in sociology these minute differences has to be very well taken care otherwise you will lose the mark then and there itself the person who is evaluating will clearly understand you know nothing about this 
okay so these are the basic uh, keywords that you need to write and uh, you can actually uh, impress the examiner if you can write it properly and if you go wrong then everything will go wrong keywords okay so all these things you have to keep in mind and when you're writing the test and everything you have to when you practice all those uh, in the test series and everywhere you need to make uh, sure that you will be doing everything properly so that you won't repeat that mistake or you will not make any mistake in the actual paper okay so you need to write as a sociologist and that's what i'm trying to do i'll make you as a you know write as a sociologist and once you have done with the thinkers you will be writing like a sociologist okay so then after this we have talked about uh, Locke, bentham Rousseau, hegel etc they try to understand inequalities as something which is inherent or acquired or the combination of both okay then we talked about Karl Marx okay so he talked about inequality in terms of uh, division of labor and he gave the solution also as communist society and we will be seeing about that we will be discussing about that in the uh, theory of uh, conflict theory of stratification okay then we talked about Weberian concept okay when we talked about Weber concept I've told you he is using a multi-dimensional understanding of inequality he is incorporating not only the class level inequality but also status and power is incorporated in his theory and it's he is trying to identify the multi-dimensional pattern of social stratification or inequality then we talked about uh, structural functional approach and that's what exactly we are going to do today we'll talk about parson we'll talk about davis and more and we'll also talk about uh, wl warner and then we talked about some uh, you know uh, understanding or some approaches where people combine to make uh, or people try to combine weberian and uh, marxian approach okay then eric colin right in their writings you can see that uh, you know combination of approaches of marx and weber and then later we have understood the postmodernist as even saying that inequalities are at the individual level it is very difficult to identify the pattern pattern of inequalities at this uh, in this society which is very complicated and very very complex people are becoming more and more individualistic so inequality is also individualistic now to an extent at a group level you can see but at the level of wider society you cannot make strata it is very difficult the strata are diffusing the so-called middle class even the members in the middle class all are not showing the same properties or characteristics there are further divisions minute micro level differences you can see okay so they have they, they have rejected the study of stratification because you can't identify stratas just like that i'm not talking about the case of 1920s 30s and 40s then you could have easily classified society upper class middle class lower class okay but now that is not possible even the middle class itself is so much divided on many 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 aspect i have shown you with example in the previous session if you missed out that video before you attend this video make sure that you are watching that video then only you will get the continuation to this video and before watching that video you have to uh, watch the video which we started with stratification so these four are going in the series and if you missed out any video you can get in touch with me here that's my instagram id or you can join my telegram channel zs Safir. this is my instagram id or uh, telegram channel you can search for my classes you'll get all my classes some students are making the playlist and all these are available in study iq only okay so you can get all those classes apart from that if you want to write test series or if you want me to evaluate your papers and if you need any guidance mentorship not only for sociology for entire civil service preparation uh, i'll do that i can help you out you can get in touch with me here instagram id or you can call me this is my number 9790 eight nine two six nine seven or nine eight nine double five double seven double seven five okay so you can get in touch with me in any of this or you can get in touch with me in facebook this is my zia safir that's my double e is here here only one i that's my uh, facebook id or zia ias okay so in any of this you can get in touch with me you can write the test okay along with me or you can attend the regular classes online class anyway is available in this way at least the important topics i'll be talk, uh, taking here okay so uh, let's get started with the discussion on structural functional theory so this is very important discussion and you will be expecting a question in structural functional theory first we will start with talcott parson very very easy theory talcott parson when we discuss in thinkers then he is a very difficult thinker but i will make sure that you will be learning it very easily here with me but here this this is a very simple theory on stratification so let's start with talcott parsons okay see talcott parsons uh, now try to understand uh, just one paragraph is enough uh, you won't get a separate question on talcott parson on stratification 
understand what he's saying if the question is about functional theory you need to be in a position to write a paragraph okay so what Parson is saying is every society is based on consensus okay so this consensus are in terms of norms and values so what he's saying is every society the, the society is based on consensus and consensus are in the form of or in terms of norms and values of society like between us there are some consensus right you are attending the classes so what are the consensus what is the consensus between us i'll teach you properly i'll refer to the standard books and i'll make sure that you'll be getting the best content and what are the uh, what is uh, what is what is expected from you what is expected from you is uh, you will be studying whatever i'm teaching right so this is a consensus and this consensus are in the form of norms and values what do you mean by norms norms are the expected behavior like what you expect from me you expect from me that i will read the standard textbook so that i can reduce the burden and i can convey you in simple language so that's what expected from you and what is expected from uh, that is what you that is what you expecting from me and what is expected from you you will study that okay so these are norms norms are expected behavior or in some other terms in a marriage function it is not expected that you will wear a white sari you know the reason right so that that's what you call as norms okay now violation of norm there is there any punishment no punishment okay so between us there are consensus which are in the form of norms is there any uh, in case if i'm not teaching you is there any 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 issue or uh, can you sue me is there any legal commitment okay no no such things right so there is no punishment if you violate norm now when you're violating norm that is that that is what you call as anomie or deviant deviation from norm okay so norms not following that is what deviant behavior or deviant activity or anomie situation you are deviating from norm but this does not attract any punishment you are wearing a white sari in a marriage that doesn't mean that you will be getting punished okay so violation of norms doesn't mean you know doesn't mean punishment you will be getting any punishment or anything it is expected behavior if you are not doing that you cannot do anything right you you cannot uh, tell me that you need to teach this way you need to teach that way nothing you can't do all those things because we don't have any legal commitment okay so similarly what do what do you mean by values that we have already discussed when we discussed about you know uh, objectivity and value neutrality i've told you value is the idea through which you decide the desirability or undesirability of anything preferability of uh, preferability or uh, you know rejection of anything superiority or inferiority of anything so values are something which we carry in our mind based on that we consider something superior or inferior these values are you know reinforced and built up over a period of time because of a lot of factors religion your family background you know your friends your education everything will be a uh, part of you know building values okay so when we are talking about patriarchal values what does that mean a male child is preferred a male child is considered superior and male child is desirable so values are the ideas through which you you know you decide the desirability undesirability etc of anything so here what i'm saying is society is based on consensus like between us there are consensus and this consensus are in the form of norms and values what do you expect from me and what i expect from you okay so i'm expecting that you will like this video and you'll comment this video etc so what you are expecting from me i'll teach you better so and i'm doing that okay so uh, so that's what the expectation now and you know this conformity to these norms and values is considered highly desirable in any society and rewarded also okay so society is made up of norms and values or society is based on consensus which is on the form of norms and values and the conformity to these norms and values is considered highly desirable and people always try to conform to these norms and values for example i try to conform to these norms what is expected from me i'll try to conform it and i'm referring to all the possible books in sociology and i'm trying to deliver it in the most simple language the complicated theories i'm trying to make it very simple and i'm giving you all the good contents and you are also attending the classes so that is done right so people try to conform to the norms and values not only people try to conform to the norms and values people also try to evaluate themselves on the basis of conformity to the norms and values not only people even the society also will evaluate those people who conform to norms and values and social stratification is nothing but it's a system which ensures proper rewards for those who conform to these norms and values or in other way social stratification is a system which ensures rewards based on intent and ability of the people 
if you conform to the norms and values if you're attending the classes if you're studying you will be rewarded simple okay so again i'm saying that's it that's about the theory this is a very simple theory you just understand this much only society is based on consensus and this is in the form of norms and values okay and conformity to these norms and values is considered desirable and rewarded and people always try to conform to these norms and values and people also evaluate themselves towards their conformity towards norms and values thus social stratification is basically a mechanism which ensures proper rewards based on the intent and ability of the individual that's it a very simple theory i don't think that you face any confusion here and if the question is asked about functional theories of stratification you should be in a position to write this much and that's enough you will not get a separate question for from parson okay so you don't unnecessarily want to read any complex textbooks complicated textbooks and complicated language that's not required okay so basically what you need to know is what is the demand of the uh, question okay what is the demand of this particular exam so I hope I am I'm, I'm conveying it properly. So the demand of the exam, if this, uh, if it is X, why you want to study Y? No, that's not required. Okay. So next is Davis and Moore theory. Even more easier, although that is lengthy. Davis and Moore theory is a very lengthy theory, but it is again very easiest, and you can relate it to yourself. It is very logical arguments. Okay. So Davis and Moore theory. I'll write the heading. Davis and Moore theory now davis and moore theory is actually a uh, very very uh, authentic theory in uh, social stratification lengthy theory three parts are there but it is a very simple theory the first part is actually he is making certain arguments okay so davis and moore is making certain arguments in terms of certain propositions and then melvin tumin will challenge these arguments or raise certain objections or criticize these arguments melvin tumin and then davis and moore will again clarify those argument so if the theory is asked on davis and moore this three parts you need to write this is not the criticism of the theory it is like uh, it is a part of the theory melvin tumin's argument okay so these three parts are together you need to write in the theory and if it is critically analyzed after writing this much then you need to use conflict perspective or conflict theory of stratification to critically analyze okay so then you need to write what is a marxian idea and everything if it is critically analyzed this won't be the criticism in that particular answer this is part of the theory melvin tumin most of the students are understanding in that way okay melvin tumin's criticism is enough to criticize this theory no melvin tumin's objections were actually part of the theory because after that davis and moore is clarifying and improving the theory so the total theory is this much and after that you need to use uh, uh, critical analysis you need to do the critical analysis with some other concepts okay that i'll be teaching you anyway critical analysis also if time permits i'll do it okay at least the theory anyway i'll complete critical analysis is separate part uh, i'll try to upload it okay so here mm, okay so this theory is actually in the book uh, some principles of social stratification 1942 okay some principles of social stratification 1942 you need to write the book name you need to even write the year also all these are value addition very important it will simply fetch you half mark if you are writing this okay then it was in the nature of certain propositions so he is making certain propositions in this theory and we will see what are those propositions understand it very carefully you will understand it here and you don't even want to read anything else after this i'll make sure that it will be printed in your mind okay because these are all are logical all propositions are logical you can connect it to yourself okay so this is going to be very easy for you and this is the easiest theory if this question is asked must attempt question you, you you will have enough content and you'll get good mark also okay so let's start with the proposition first what he's saying is the society is made up of certain positions okay no pro no problem in that no question about that society is having certain positions and some of which are functionally more important even that also is accepted right so some of the positions are functionally more important for example if you talk about chief secretary position and the collector position these are different positions and some are more important what is more important chief secretary is more important or similarly dgp and a superintendent of police dgp is more important so certain positions are there some of which are functionally more important that itself shows you a stratified society okay so so any society if you take certain positions are there some are functionally more important so society is made up of certain positions positions some are functionally functionally 
more important okay some positions are functionally more important and what do you think the functionally more important positions need to be filled with the most talented people can you uh, can you imagine a chief secretary's position uh, without any talented person no similarly dgp so a person who's having that quality and qualification should be sitting over there otherwise it will create total disorder in the society social disorder so the most important position has to be filled with the most talented people an unskilled labor cannot be in that position okay so that is the next point so most important position requires the most talented people most talented people now do you think if you for every work you you give the same salary and same rewards and same privileges do you get the most talented people for this kind of post you won't get it why, why? why? because they can go for some other things also so if you need to attract the most talented people you have to give more rewards so more rewards are basically attached to these more important positions to attract the talented people so i hope you understood society is made up of position some are functionally more important than the others and the functionally more important positions has to be filled with the most talented people to attract the most talented people some more rewards are attached to the more important positions okay so rewards rewards for attracting the talented people for that particular position and to attain talent you have to undergo training and sacrifices a lot of training and sacrifices so people will go for training and sacrifices now for example you take your own case you want to become uh, ias or ips why because of the rewards privileges etc which are attached to it do you think you are here and you are attending this lecture and all for doing social service after becoming ias and ias ips i don't think so because if you want to do social service you don't even want to waste this time you can go out and you can do social research uh, you, social service you can join some ngo or you can do it yourself also there is no need to be ias or ips to do social uh, social service okay you don't why you want to why you want power to do the social service why you can't do otherwise okay so if you are going for an interview and if somebody is asking you why you want to become an ias officer don't tell that i want to do social service immediately they understand what is there in your mind okay so there should be something every year they will ask this kind of question with everyone even to me also two interviews in two interviews ask why you want to become an ips officer okay so the you don't say social service because everybody know it's not for social service otherwise it could be done in any other way you can even be a teacher and you can do social service you can do social service in any way okay so even now when i'm teaching i'm doing a social service similarly any way you can do that you don't want power to do that i hope you understood so you are, you want to become ias ips officer because of the privileges or because of the high rewards which are attached to this position this is a functionally more important position so you want to become one among that so what you will do you are going for training and sacrifices you are sitting in the uh, you are sitting here you are listening to this lecture and otherwise will you do this no you, this, this is a kind of sacrifice you could have attended some function you could have enjoyed you could have gone anywhere you could have partied all these things you are sacrificing right so you are going for training and sacrifices so what is social stratification then social stratification is effectively a mechanism or a system which ensures that the most important positions are filled with the most talented people or most important positions are filled with the most talented people by offering the better rewards so when you're offering the better and high rewards obviously there will be a strata developed because you can't give all these rewards to the others if everything is given to everybody you can't get the most talented people i hope you understood so there should be a competition and there is a competition here you can see every uh, every one of us are competing for this exam for this particular post why because of the privileges oh, okay i am taking that 100 percentage of you maybe 99 percentage is going for this you may be an exception okay so i'm i'm not saying that everybody even actually uh, theoretically that is not possible okay so i'm saying practically 99 percentage okay that will be fine so i hope you understood what i mean to say even in your case also you can connect it these are logical society is made up of positions some are functionally more important than the others and the functionally more important positions has to be filled with the most talented people no doubt you all accept it and uh, the to attract the talented people what you need you need to give more rewards otherwise you won't go there you won't do all these sacrifices because if you need to get the talent you need to do a lot of training sacrifices etc if no rewards are there i don't think any one of you will do this any one of us will not do it nobody will do it okay so those who are undergoing training and sacrifices must be rewarded and that is the reason why social stratification is there i hope you understood so this is about the first
first part of the theory then what happened melvin tumin raised certain objections i hope everybody understood this much there is no need to have any confusion there is no need to have any problem these are simple propositions these are logical you can connect it yourself so that's why i've told you after i discuss this you will never forget it even if you want to you cannot forget it because there is something connected to you i've i've connected it with you right so you can never forget it then what melvin tumin says is he says the first point is taking he is asking how to judge the relative importance of a position you are saying that some are functionally more important but how can you judge the relative importance of a position for example i am talking about a doctor and a teacher teacher without a teacher a doctor will not be there similarly without a doctor a teacher cannot survive in case of any problem is there right so how can you judge the relative importance of a position that involves some value judgment okay value preference is there so some bias is there so this is the first question actually raised by the um, by melvin tubin so first one uh, how to judge how to judge relative importance of position so it is a question okay and I, I can tell you that later davis and more give arguments and clarification for each and every point secondly what he's saying is uh there is no effective method for measurement of talent yeah you are saying talented people is required but how can you measure the talent of the people for example ias ips post that we are talking about is this exam that we are writing is this actually measuring the talent of the people no we can't say that okay so is there any effective measures for uh, understanding the talent of the people that is again a question there is no effective measure for measuring the talent of the people similarly if you are let's suppose you are you are writing the cat exam is that the only way in which you can write the talent understand the talent of the people no right so how to measure how to measure talent of the people okay third one what he is saying is you are talking about rewards high rewards etc so the high rewards are you know you can consider it as functional only if you give equal opportunity to everyone but society is not like that everybody is not having the equal opportunity for example if you remember i've discussed this point you uh, somebody is born for upper class uh, father and lower class father okay or basically son of lower class and son of upper class so uh, who is having more access to better education this person having more access to better education better health care and all access so who is having better chance to you know achieve better position by getting education and everything this person is having more chances even though in society we are saying the society is open everybody have uh, possibilities everybody can write the exam but still this person is having a lot of inherent limitations okay there are a lot of practical hindrances for a person who is born in a poor family so parental background infrastructure everything matters in this context right so the rewards can be considered functional only if you give equal opportunity to all like equal education uh, recruitment training and everything should be equal otherwise some sections will be getting that for example you are preparing for ias ips okay so do you think everybody can have access to the costly coaching if you want to go to delhi how much you need to pay for gs you need to pay for 1 1.5 lakh and if you need to attend this optional classes you are attending optional classes here and most of you are not able to pay that's why you are sitting here most of you okay so it is uh, around 50000 right if you need to go to delhi and if you need to attend uh, classes it is 50000 and if you are getting it at better uh, here it is a better option you don't want to go to delhi you can sit in your home and you can watch it so it will be more convenient and you are getting the better classes also for sure you are getting the better classes i can guarantee you that okay so and that you will understand only if you go to delhi and you start attending the classes over there you will understand otherwise you already if you have understood uh, attended those classes then clearly you will understand there was no point in attending those class classes there was no point in wasting that uh, 50000 okay so what i'm saying is 1.5 lakh for that uh, gs and then optional 2 lakhs then you know traveling expense then you have food expense your hostel expense your material expense all together around 4 to 5 lakhs you need to spend only for this in your uh, one year preparation and do you think a poor person can afford to do that no it is very difficult okay so who is having more access or chances to become ias and ips officers it is a upper class person right so it is crystal clear that's what melvin tumin saying rewards can be considered functional only if you know you give equal opportunity to all and that is not there there are a lot of practical hindrances that could be in terms of parental background or anything okay so rewards 
are considered functional I will uh, do the I'll discuss a PDF with the PDF I'll explain everything so I have the PDF of this theory but now I'm writing down the most important point what you need to do is you just need to write down these points and make a synopsis with that and you try to write it in your own paragraph for the reference you can read the PDF and I'll share that in my telegram channel you'll get over there or you can get in touch with me directly I'll share in case if I'm not sharing it in telegram channel maybe some issues will be there I can share it directly also okay so rewards are functional only if equal opportunity is given so I'm not writing completely I just want to tell you the important point only if equal opportunity is given and then what he's saying is you are ta you're talking about training sacrifices etc most of the time uh, there won't be much sacrifices except that suspended uh, earning during the training period otherwise uh, the cost of training etc will be uh, taken care by the parents then uh, next point what he's saying is uh, social stratification is not functional it is actually dis dysfunctional because of these tractors it create distrust and hostility among people okay so it create it, it is dysfunctional it create uh, distrust and hostility so these are the questions raised by Melvin Tumin now we will see how Davis and Moore is answering let's take the first question and out of this first two is more relevant so we will talk more about these two or the first one is more relevant how to judge the relative importance of a position so the clarification given by Davis and Moore is see it is very difficult but it is not impossible to judge the relative importance of a position firstly what you can do is by the degree to which the the position which is in question is unique okay for example one when, when you're talking about a doctor or a teacher and an IAS officer okay a teacher and an IAS officer so who is unique here or teacher and a collector if you talk about or teacher and a superintendent of police who's more unique the entire district depends on this collector teacher there can be n number of teachers in the district every 10th person may be a teacher see teach everybody can be a teacher everybody cannot be a good teacher I'm not talking about a good teacher I'm talking about teachers okay so but collector only one person in one district okay so who's more unique here collector is more unique so can you judge the relative importance now in terms of uniqueness yes that is one way so in terms of uniqueness you can understand the relative importance secondly uh, by the degree to which other positions are functionally dependent on the one in question for example again when you talk about teacher and collector okay so uh, where people are more dependent on the people are the entire district depending on this collector and not teacher okay so the other positions are dependence on the one in question that is another way so by the degree to which the one in question is unique so here it is unique secondly uh, people are more dependent on which one this one so in that way you can actually understand the importance it's, it's difficult but it's not impossible now here when I'm talking about a teacher and a collector it is very easy for you to make the difference but what if I'm talking about a teacher and a doctor here also I am saying doctor is considered more unique and more important right I have told you just before anybody can be a teacher even I am I am an accidental teacher accidentally I became a teacher and I start teaching good so I have understood that I can I can also teach you good so I am teaching and I am continuing with the teaching but uh, can everybody be a doctor accidentally can you be a doctor you cannot be a doctor if you see I can say I'm, I'm studying I'm teaching sociology I'm teaching ethics all these things I am studying I'm referring and in my preparation time also I've studied so with that experience I'm teaching okay but I cannot be this one similarly uh, only a doctor can be a doctor but anybody can be a teacher so which one is more unique doctor is more unique people are more dependent on doctor also okay so I hope you understood in this way you can actually judge the relative importance so the first question is solved okay second one uh, how to measure talent of the people and uh, see actually Melvin Tumin is talking about some alternative motivational schemes you can give alternative motivational scheme so here Melvin Tumin is uh, also silent he is not talking about alternative motivational scheme what uh, Davis and Moore saying is uh, uh, rewards you cannot go for alternative motivational scheme instead of rewards because if society is equal then there will be a total social disorder and that is not expected similarly uh, here he is talking about dysfunctional uh, what Davis and Moore saying us in some aspects it may be dysfunctional but the fact that it exists in every society every non society shows that it is having something functional to do it and it is inevitable reality okay so these are the clarifications which are given by 
Davis and Moore. And out of which the first one is more important, how to judge the relative importance of a position. So I hope you understood this theory. That's about the theory. This three part is part of the theory. So you need to write all these three. And if the question is about critically analyze, now we need to critically analyze. So that critical analysis part I'll discuss in the next session. I'll discuss that in the next video. In the next video, I will also talk about WL Warner and the PDF of this theory that we have discussed. I'll discuss in the next session okay so here already 30 minutes are over so what i'll do is i'll quickly discuss about parsons theory here okay you can see here parsons theory according to talcott parson every society is based on consensus in terms of norms and values so consensus this word is important norms and values the conformity to these norms and values is considered desirable and often rewarded okay then People tend to evaluate themselves in terms of their ability to conform to these norms. Thus, social stratification is a mechanism of ensuring people that they have been given a particular position as per their intent and ability. Now, next is Davis and Moore theory. So I'll discuss these are the propositions. Everything is there. Proposition is there. Criticism is there. Melvin Tumin is there. So all this I will discuss in the next session. And then I'll talk about uh, W.L. Warner also. Warner, uh, Warner also I'll discuss here. So Warner is coming. So in the next session, I will discuss the PDF of uh, Davis, and, Davis and Moore. Uh, in detail, we'll see there. And in between, if something is missed out, I'll discuss that when we are reading out the PDF. And WL Warner also, we will discuss over there. So I hope you understood what all things you have discussed. Simple terms, social stratification means society is made up of positions. Some are functionally more important than the others. Functionally more important positions has to be filled with the talented people. To attract the talented people, you need to at attach more rewards to that position so that you can attract the talented people. And to attain the talent people undergo training and sacrifices so they must be rewarded so social stratification is a system which is essentially fulfilling the most important positions with the most talented people simple that's it and then you can talk about melvin tumin objections and the clarifications so i hope you understood the session if you have any doubt related to your preparation civil services not only sociology you can see here in telegram channel i've done videos on almost all the subjects okay you can see entire history i've done entire entire economy almost economy i've done ethics i've done quantitative aptitude i've done all these videos you can watch over there in the youtube or in telegram you'll get so zia safir or you can get in touch with me in my phone number if you need to write a test series or anything along with me okay so see you guys thank you so that's about the session uh, i hope you understood everything that we have discussed today if you have any doubt in any of the videos that we have discussed so far you can get in touch with me here that's my instagram id okay or you can join the telegram channel you will get all my videos over there everything is there or you can see here this is a telegram channel or uh, this is the instagram id these two are my facebook page you can get in touch with me in any of this if you want to learn economy with me or history with me or general studies any subjects you can if you need regular classes you can get in touch with me or the online classes are available with study iq you will get all those classes still you will get my youtube videos in this telegram channel okay so i hope you understood everything that we have discussed so see you guys thank you